I'm not going anywhere. You will fetch my body from here. The defined words there of the Fort Hare Vice Chancellor, Professor Sakela uh, Bushungu, who after two staff members were gunned down at his university. On the 6th of January, his personal bodyguard, Boneli Vesele, was shot execution style. He'd been assigned to protect Bushungu following death threats. It followed the assassination of the university's fleet manager last year. So, who wants Bushungu and other senior members of his team dead? Well, it might have it might have something to do with the corruption that's been uncovered there, from procurement to fake qualifications, allegedly to connected high-profile individuals. It's alleged, for example, that the Eastern Cape Premier Oscar Mabuyane was registered for a master's program whose minimum requirements he did not meet. So was one of his predecessors, Nokolo Kivit, who is now now a deputy minister, and they are not the only ones. To unpack this, I'm very pleased to tell you, I'm joined on the line by Professor Sakela Bushungu. He is, of course, as I say, the vice chancellor of the University of Fort Hare. Thank you very much for your time this morning. It's great to have you on our show. Thank you very much, Bongana, and uh, uh, greetings to all your listeners. When you were appointed, did you have any sense of what you were up against? <laughs> that, that's a very interesting question. Absolutely no idea. I knew it was a university, uh, like many others. I knew there was it had its fair share of uh, dysfunction, and um, and I took it as a challenge. That's all. I didn't know how deep some of this stuff goes at the time. And of course, I mean it's an it's an important university in terms of our historical landscape, right? You're about to celebrate um, the founding of it this very month, I believe. Yeah, indeed, it, it it is, and that's for me. That's part of the attraction, part of the attraction to contribute what I know, what I've gained from all the other five institutions that I've worked with, for in the country and internationally to come and share and contribute here. So it was a great attraction for me. Uh, indeed, you are absolutely right. On the eighth of this month, on the eighth of uh, February, we ce- we're celebrating 107 years. So. We are a tried and tested university. We've produced leaders, business people, professionals across the world, really. Yeah, no one has to argue about the legacy of Fort Hare University. All right, let's talk to current issues now. What were some of the irregul- irregularities you uncovered? Look, I mean, some of the stuff uh, uh, that started from, from, the, from, from the beginning, and I've told some of them in the media, um, you know, uh, from business people forging my signature so that they could, they could get uh, money from, from the banks, doing all sorts of things because they were not appro- uh, appointed properly, and uh, bogus invoices that were issued all to the tune of $19.5 million. All of these I reported back in 2018 already, and they have set. Somebody in the system just decided to quash them. Those cases, and then I'm talking those two specific cases, they've never seen the light of day in court. They've never, people have never pleaded. Uh, only recently, the cleaning one uh, was, uh, was taken to court uh, recently. Four, uh, five people were arrested for 14.5 of the money. But many others, I can tell you about the the, the admin, uh, the, the, the B admin uh, honors degrees in in our small campus, Bishop, and a bogus professor who had been admitting people there uh, illegally, and and of course, and of course, the professor himself is bogus. That 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 what that's what made worse, and it's a recent discovery of ours. Prof, I'll come to that specific issue in just a moment. But um, in, in another media interview, you spoke to JJ Tabani on ENCA. Uh, just explain, if I understood it correctly, about the 48 toilet rolls. That contract escalated to how much? It, it, this is, let me, let me take from the beginning very, very quickly, Ebongani. This is a, a cleaning contract that was signed in 2012 in 2012, right, way before my time. And then the money to service the, the contract on, the, on a monthly basis, I can't remember, it was kind of a fair amount of money, but it was all within the kind of the four pages of the contract. But what happened from the beginning is that additional bogus invoices were issued on the side 
in favor of the same service provider by a lowly official who did not bother to get any signatures. So the first shot, the first try, was 15,000 invoice for 48 toilet rolls. 48 toilet rolls, 15,000. And of course, over time, the person and his collaborators in our finance department got emboldened. It went into a few hundred thousand. And I think by the time we nabbed it, we nipped it in the bud, and they were bold enough to issue additional invoices of 5 million. Goodness me. I mean, it was in full bloom, I would say. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the issue that you've already referred to where a businessman, you say, forged your signature and you got a call from Standard Bank, did you? Yes, yes, yes. And which we, we, is standard because there are two things about Standard Bank and they're not, they're not a party to, to this uh, malfeasance at all. They're first, of, first of all, they're our bankers, but they also happen to be bankers to this business person. So this business person apparently wanted uh, 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 additional finance, so they wanted collateral. The guy says, no, I've got, I've got a list with Fort Hare for 66 students. And they said, okay, fine, just, just, just produce the lease. And, of course, he didn't have the lease because he was brought in irregularly. He was brought in irregularly through a, a, a bogus process. And so he went to some of his collaborators inside. They got the template for the, the lease. And they filled it out, and then they 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 they, um, they forced my signature at the end. So the bank gave him the money apparently because he was he was a regular customer. But as as part of their risk assurance thing, they they sent me this thing. They said to you, by the way, just just for interest, do you know about this? I looked at it one time. I said, never my signature. This is a forgery, and that's the person who has not who whose case has been. Uh, postponed for more than 20 times in Umtata, more than 20 times. Uh, he has never pleaded. Somebody is sitting on that case. Goodness me. Now let's come to the qualifications uh, challenges. Let's start with Professor Ijeoma. He's implicated on several fronts. Well, well let me start with the, 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 the easier one. The, first, the, the more recent one is when we, when we fired him, he stole a university vehicle and he took it to Pretoria. So there's that case also, which is stuck, has not moved. The theft of a vehicle, fortunately, we recovered the vehicle. The police went to fetch it. But that case has not moved. This is a 2022 case. That's one. The 2021 case. That's one. But more seriously, more seriously, he was admitting people. And he had touts. He had people going around uh, offices of important people uh, um, inviting them to participate in these programs. And uh, he basically flouted all uh, regulations when it comes to admission and so on and so forth. And because he, faced, he sits in a separate campus by himself, he was, he was everything there. He had to sign people in, in breach of regulations, and something that was discovered later. So we now, as I understand it, have at least two premiers of the Eastern Cape involved. This would be specifically Oscar Mabuyane, the current premier, and one of his predecessors, Notlo Lokivit. Can you comment on that? Let, let me put it this way. I'm not going to mention their names. You, you have mentioned their names. Somebody else mentioned their names. But I'm, I'm, I will tell you for sure that we have over, six, over 15 or 16 cases of people who were ir uh, irregularly, uh, um, uh, what you call it, uh, enrolled, did not meet the requirements. Now, we have a device here. If you don't meet the requirements, but you have uh, worked in the area that you want to you do your study in, we do what we call recognition of prior learning kind of exercise. Yes. In which your competency is tested, and all of that is validated by the Senate, the highest academic body of the institution. Basically, at will, he took these people, no recognition of prior learning, RPL, no test, nothing. He just signed them in, just like that. And so you, you mentioned people there. There's several others. Yes, indeed. And uh, it was... It was why, why can't you mention them, Professor? Why can't you mention them? No, 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 no. no, no. Their the, the names are known, uh, uh, They are... With the SIU, they are at their hawks with open documents. Well, I may as well mention them then, but I always prefer because... No, these, these are things that are part of the public record. Go ahead, say yeah, that. I mean, now they, uh, 
Absolutely, they're part of, part of the, the public record. Yes, 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 yes. But let me say something else which, which might interest you even beyond the names of the people. That this professor of ours had actually, and as a small army, a small battalion of ghost writers who were writing uh, proposals, who were writing dissertations for some of these people. I would, I would not. I'm, I'm totally not surprised by that because, and and the reason it's important to mention their names. I mean, <laughs> irony is 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 quite something. Others of them are members of parliament. Let's take Dr. Mahabo Mhaule, right, who's the deputy minister of basic education right now. There are questions around her PhD. Well, I wasn't know. I wasn't aware about uh, Dr. Ma- Mahaule. I, I wasn't uh, uh, aware of it. Uh, all I know is that she's a graduate, a recent graduate, uh, with a doctoral degree. That's all I know about it. Wasn't one of her, wasn't her supervisor Professor Ijeoma? I, I can't. I can't. I don't have that information at the tip of, of my fingers right now. But I want to tell you something very, very specific and unequivocal, that a lot of the rot revolved around Professor Ijeoma. A lot of the rot revolved around. So uh, if, if a person is supervised by uh, Ijeoma, chances are that there might have been something wrong. Chances are that there might, this small battalion of, of writers who were on standby to write proposals and, and, and dissertations was involved. And what's worse about the Ijeoma case, We've reported the case. The man has not had residency or papers to live in the country for more than 10 years, but he's sitting here, moving around, and still, oh, I don't know what he gets up to now because we fired him from the university. All right, and so the threats began. I mean, you're now sitting in an extraordinary position. You're an academic. You're working at this legacy institution, and you have to have bodyguards. Correct, correct. And it, it's, it's an unusual thing. It's, it's something that became very clear to me uh, from November, the 1st of November 2017, the year of my arrival. I was, about, I was about 10 months in the job at the time. And I've had to live that life all the way through. And of course, we had this tragic incident now of the assassination of Mr. Vesely, and which, which I believe was an attempt to assassinate both of us. How do you continue knowing you've got a bounty on your head? <laughs> Look, I, I, yeah, that's that's a that's a very very, very important question you're asking. But what, what what else can I say? Do I run away from thieves? Do I run away from my job? Do I run away? I, I've got a job to do. I'm afraid, like you and I and everybody else. So I have a job to do. Uh, the fact that someone is out there kind of sending uh, uh, paid assassins that's their problem. That's their problem, but I have a job to do. That one I'm not going to run away from. I have a job to do. It's a very important institution. It's a very important assignment. And that is why I've appealed to the top authority in the country, the president of the republic, to say, president, myself, my executive, and some of my people are not safe. Do something. At least that's, that's for me, is what will give me comfort to continue doing the job. Do you know the price on your head? I've heard many, many, many things. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to bring it into my head. But at the moment is this. At the moment, I can breathe. I'm alive. And I'm getting up. I'm going to the office to do the job and do it to the best of my ability. And I will continue doing so. Last one, Prof. Have you had adequate support? Minister Bladen Zimande told me he personally called you to offer his condolences after the January attack. No, no, he's absolutely right. He called. He called. He called me personally um, and to, to to offer his condolences. He was also one of three ministers and the deputy minister who were sent down by the president here. Um, uh, I, I met him briefly. Because on that day, my, the, the, my, the, my, my attention was meeting with Minister Kele of police uh, so that we can deal with the cases. But I've met with him. He was at the funeral. Uh, we greeted, and uh, that, that, that's that. But I just want to clarify a few things which I've seen kind of being bended about in the media, right? The, the invitation to, to the SIU to come and assist was at our own behest, and our own as executive of the university, and nobody else. Very clear. 
We went to the FIU. We, I said, come, you have more resources. We're doing this. We drill in the same area. Let's work together. I just want to clarify that unequivocally. That's us. Uh, secondly, the fact that the university went into administration, which is earlier, which is about five years ago, was again at our bequest, when, uh, our behest rather, when Minister Pando was the Minister of Higher Education, we asked her to dissolve this rogue council. And I was accompanied by members of that council, the good members of that council. Prof, listen, um, you continue holding your head high. Um, you are certainly doing great honor to the legacy of that institution. Let us hope sense prevails because this conversation, frankly, is, is absurd. It is absurd that I'm talking to you about your life being under threat for the work that you are doing. Um, but we wish you all the best and uh, we'll certainly keep an eye on this story and we'll certainly be applying pressure on our side so that you get the support and the protection you need and for those cases to be resolved. Appreciating your time this morning, Professor Sakela Bushungu, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Fort Hare. I told you it would make the hairs on your back stand up. Current events, developing stories, tough questions, your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.